As the sun rises, we say, see you later to our friends in the Arizona desert as we hate to say goodbyes. We hate to say goodbyes because they're a lot more permanent and see you later means we're truly going to see you later. And in about a week, we plan to meet back up with them in sunny California on a new journey. But today, we head north on a totally separate journey and we're going to take you with us. Welcome, Welcome to, to Fabulous, Fabulous Las Vegas! Vegas. <laughs> Right now, we are sitting maybe three miles from the Hoover Dam, and we are going to check the Hoover Dam out today. Yes, it's a thing that's been on our list for a while, and we're finally here. And we're finally going to do it. Yes. So over the last few weeks, we've gained several subscribers, and we want to fill you in on who we are, and why we're doing this, and why we're living in a bus. What is our story? This is our episode of everyone has a story. So come along. As we pull in to where the Hoover Dam is located, we want to take you back and how we got started. So December 31st of 2017, Tanya and I had sold everything and we had hit the freaking road. If it didn't fit, it didn't ship. First stop, Colorado Springs for New Year's Eve with some friends. Mm -hmm. But let's go back. Let's go farther back. How far back? Let's go back to the beginning. When we first met? When we first met. How did we meet? We met in a bar. When? We met in May... May 28th. 2008. <laughs> in a small town in Tecumseh, Nebraska. Yeah. We hit it off immediately. Mm -hmm. It was love at first sight. Literally. Couldn't lie to you. It's been absolutely amazing. But what next? Well, then we got married. Six, <laughs> six freaking months after we've been together, I asked her to marry me. He did. And on June 13th, 2009, we said our vows, we said our dues. And promised our lives to each other for the rest of our lives. And now, today, <laughs> it's ride or die. 100%. Catch you in a minute. So we decided to take a nice little hike to the Hoover Dam and uh, get some fresh air, get some sunshine. But let's get back to where we left off, where our life really started. So we got married, and when what happened? We did all the things. We had two dogs. We had the jobs. We had the four. Okay, we had the everything you were supposed to do. <laughs> the cars, the toys. Yeah. All of the things. And our life kind of spiraled out of control in 2012. It did. So in 2008, we're going to back up a little bit. 2008, I was diagnosed with a disease called endometriosis. And uh, I'd had a lot of surgeries because of it. It caused me a lot of problems. And in 2012, Dustin and I had to make a decision. It was one of the hardest decisions we ever had to make. Life changing. Life changing. And that decision was to give up our rights to be biological parents. I had to have a hysterectomy June 13th of 2012 for um, the endometriosis. So that's where the trail kind of forked for us. <laughs> Get it? That's where things got difficult. I believe that the hysterectomy and the challenges of life and trying to figure out what to do and how we were gonna basically move forward was more difficult than we thought. And I actually found myself caught up in an addiction of prescription pain pills and it got ugly so after about nine months of very heavy use of alcohol and drugs and all of the things 
I decided it was time for me to get the help that I needed. So in two, uh, October 12, 2012, I went to Knoxville, Tennessee to a treatment facility to get myself right. So Tanya was healing up from a hysterectomy. I'm healing up from an addiction. And so I guess you could say 2012 was a, a pretty rough, rough one. year. <laughs> and that's kind of where it all started. As we come out of the darkness of addiction, disease, debt, depression, all of the things, we started to finally start to see some of the light. And how we started to do that is we started to look at our health first. And we started to focus on getting our minds healthy, our bodies healthy, and diving deeper into living a healthy lifestyle. We started to focus on our finances and figure out how we could start budgeting our money so we could work our way out of debt. And from there, we just started to do the work. As our new lives were under construction, just like the bridge that we just walked through, it started to get better. It started to get easier. We were working on ourselves. We were working on each other. We were helping each other out. And we were starting to really make the connection back as husband and wife. Because we had basically just lost ourselves. We did. And we were now, basically like roommates. Yeah, we were basically roommates sharing a space. Yes. And now we've worked on our relationship. We've worked on our health. We've worked on our finances. We've worked on every aspect of our lives that needed worked on, and we did it together. And we had fun. We did have fun. But there was more to life. There was way more there to life. There was more things to do. So many more things to see. So after getting our lives back on track, we started to see a lot of tiny homes and minimalist living lifestyles. And it really piqued our interest. It got us into thinking we could do that too. And so we started doing it. We started to downsize. We started to sell some of our things. And in the meantime, we ended up losing both of our dogs. And as much as it was devastating, we knew that that was the push we needed to keep going and to continue down that road of living a minimalist lifestyle and traveling to the fullest. As we walk along, the so fitting railroad trail <laughs> along Lake Mead and up to Hoover Dam. That's where it kind of went for us. I had worked for the railroad for 11 years, I think when we started yeah. traveling. And for the next two years, we traveled the country, chasing the railroad, chasing the work and living out of motels. We had a four wheel drive pickup that we packed all of our things into on December 31st, 2017. And if it fit, it shipped. And if not, it either got sold, donated, or given away. So for the first two years, we traveled all across the states. We've seen 25 different states, seen all the sites, did all the touristy things. 
and we truly enjoyed it. We had so much fun doing it. But we also started to see people were living in vehicles and it really piqued our interest because we needed something like that. We needed something that we could stay in and sleep in and make it to all of the things and not have to worry about going from hotel to hotel. And so we decided to buy our first bus, our first bus, Lucy. But what about them guns? Just like that construction zone, we had to get constructing. Lucy needed to be turned in to a weekend warrior rig. For the next three or four months, we tore it apart, took all the things out that we didn't need, and built up everything that we did. We had a queen size bed, we had a table, we had a toilet, we had a little kitchenette with some counter space so we could truly hit the road, hit the country on the weekends, chasing sunsets, chasing sunrises, national parks, and all of the beauty of America. But there was something. There was something not 100% right. There was something that needed fixed. Now don't get us wrong, Lucy was the perfect bus for us. She was everything we needed. But we decided that we wanted a little bit more. We decided we wanted to live in this bus, not just use it for a weekend rig. So we had thought long and hard about it and we bought Lucille. So since we had found Lucille, we had found exactly what we were looking for, it was time to get to work. And with no time spared, we ripped the seats out, tore the floor out, and started tearing the ceiling down and the handicap lift, and really removing all the things that we didn't need. Kind of like our lives. Kind of like our lives. We were down to a few totes of stuff. We were still donating stuff to Goodwill and we were building like crazy. It's been about eight months of nonstop work. We've enjoyed every second of it, even when we cussed and bled. <laughs> Mostly <laughs> There's you bled. It's been a lot of heartache, a lot of you know high tension, high frustration. But let me tell you, building our future together, building our home together, Traveling the world together has really brought us so much closer together. Yes. And we truly have enjoyed it up to right now. So this is where we found ourselves in between a rock and a hard place. We wanted to travel full time. We wanted to be able to do things when we wanted to on our terms and not have to get back to something. And with Dustin working full time for the railroad, it made it a little bit difficult. So again, we had to make a tough decision. A life changing one. Another life changing one. And that decision was for Dustin to leave the railroad leave the job that he had been working for 13 years. A steady income, a 401k, all of the things that we're told that you're supposed to do. So January 2nd, he left and here we are doing life on our terms.
So as we get to our destination, we realize there really isn't one. We're always looking for more. We're always looking to be better. We're always looking to improve. We're always looking to be our best selves. And if that's what we focus on and that's what we chase for the rest of our lives, I think we're finally on the right track. <laughs> Is bus life forever? Yes. I don't have any idea. But for right now, we feel like we're exactly where we're supposed to be with the exact people we're supposed to be with doing the exact things we're supposed to be doing. And so, with that, we're gonna enjoy the Hoover Dam. We're gonna check out the Hoover Dam. Let's go. Ooh, that was quite a walk. That was a really good hike. <laughs> it was beautiful. With that, we had a good time telling you about us, sharing our story. And that's something that we love to do. We love to reach out to people, share our story, share who we are. We're an open book. We are not okay. afraid to yeah. tell people, you know, if they ask us any questions, um, you know, what it is that we've gone through and how we get through things and have transitioned our lives. Um, and every day, like we're still working and transitioning and building and growing and learning. And we love helping people. So if you have questions on our bus, on our lives, on how we got over certain situations, mm -hmm. or if we have given you inspiration or we have spread love your way, because that is our goal that is, is to spread goal. all of the love, all of the love. So if any of that has helped you or inspired you, or if you just love watching our videos, reach out, let us know. We would love to hear from you um, and see what it is that we can do for you. Or even if it's just to say hello. Sure. We would love to hear from you. Um, we actually absolutely enjoy helping, sharing and spreading love. So with that. Spread love.